Let's see how to start this one off. Usually when I'm reading stuff, I do want a book to like get to the point. And lately, a lot of the, especially in traditional publishing land, a lot of these things take a while to build up. It's just like my, my time is even more constrained now. So I want the action to start up sooner rather than later. Uh, take, for example, the Ancestral Night White Space Book 1 by Elizabeth Bear. I just, I'm just using this as an example. And with the sample here, she starts off the chapter, you know, chapter 1. The boat didn't have a name. He wasn't deemed significant enough to need a name by the authorities and registries that governed such things. He had a registration number. Human Terra. He had a salvage class, salvage tug. Or, uh, but didn't have a name officially. We called him Singer. If Singer had an opinion on the issue, he never registered it, but he never complained. Singer was the ship mind as well as the ship, or at least he inhabited the ship's virtual spaces the same way we inhabited the physical ones, but my partner Connella and I didn't own him. You can't own a sentience in civilized space. I mean... <laughs> I guess it's just because I'm getting spoiled on reading a lot of pulps, but it, it, it's like I want something to be happening like right from the get-go. Uh, like the, 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 this chapter builds up to them exploring, you know, a ship that's like uh, having some troubles and everything, but it takes them a couple pages to really start getting into it. And it's just like nowadays maybe start where they're investigating the the trouble like almost automatically and like something is happening you know, uh, I, I know there's some books that they want to really build up their mystery and take their time but when it when it comes to science fiction I'm reading nowadays I, I want it to go a bit quicker again it's just my preference but it just feels like a majority of books nowadays take a while to fire off on all cylinders. Yeah, again, all of this is just my observations and my own wheelhouse preferences as a reader. I mean, it, I, I realize she's probably trying to do a bit of world building and all that stuff, you know, like kind of like those ripples of light where messages written in physics and perception, the information they offered would have seemed cryptic to most people. They would have seemed cryptic to me 20 ans years ago, I guess, I guess ans is years, but I just say years. When I was a wee slip of a person freshly skinned out and free of the clad I grew up in, uh... Numbla Yangu Hiana Milano Go, something like that. <laughs> Again, I murder everything that's like even the English language, so there you go. But I had lots of patience reading their frequency and patterns now. Singer was, well, slowing wasn't exactly the right word, but it would do. We were, to coin a phrase, getting there. Uh, I'm, I'm just like skimming the rest of this, the, the sample, just to see like uh, it, if it stuff picks up but uh, it eventually does a little bit like uh, you know the where the characters are suspecting that pirates have attacked and well you know they don't like being called pirates singer joked freeloaders Connell came from the world called Spartacus notorious for its activistic culture or is that activistic or a-T-A-V-I-S-T-I-C. Um, honestly, I'd probably have to look up a, a, a little bit of a dictionary point for that part. Uh, one reason it was that way was because it, was, it sat so close to free port, strongholds, border, brush fighters, and constant threat of raids, and one shipping being picked off contributed to a martial culture, and I wasn't supposed to know this, but Connell had survived a pirate raid on an asteroid settlement when he was a child. Uh, I frowned at the scar. Singer's senses were designed for space, and his readouts told me that the scar was fresh. I mean, uh, if they had opened up with a little bit of this, rather than just, like, the, like, I know you want to establish some parts of your setting, but that, that's also the reason why I usually start off my chapters with, like, little clo quotes and stuff, so that way I can set up other parts of the setting, or different kinds of you know, uh, expositional setups. 
or placeholders or little little tips and all that things and maybe some character observations it's just my preference of doing it but to me that that's something you kind of have to balance when you're doing an opening book it's like how much do you exposition how much do you have the characters get into the thick of the action I'd rather do exposition and things through the mystery or the action you know it's the reason why I like doing like little hooks with each chapter where it's like it, to, to try to get people to keep reading because that's how I look at things like that's how I want to keep reading I want to have little hooks every chapter to, to, to keep pushing me forward but as I you know read through a little bit more of this it's just it, it's just taking them a while for them to get to the part where it's like okay let's let's go check out this other ship uh oh man I'm probably gonna just put this in the trash just to showcase like you know and I'll put a link to the sample so people can take a look at it but it, it's just yeah it's taking too long to rev up uh, another thing that kind of gets me is like um this part. I could have argued, couldn't, but I knew my unwillingness to tune my Kim was opaque to Kanala on an emotional level even when he professed to understand it intellectually. I thought he actually may be mellow and mature a bit if he didn't bump and tune so much to keep his responses calmed down to Spartacus stoic ideals. On the other hand, I'd have to put up with him finally experiencing adolescence and that whole thing was such a mess that I turned mine off when it happened. Well, okay, maybe a little after it happened. Some people have to learn the hard way, and apparently I am one of them. It was his brain and his chem and his business, so I just said we should have pulled a permit. I mean, it, it comes back to like when I'm first reading something, like I don't know these characters from, you know, Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Jan, Fran, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so for them to talk about some of their more interpersonal kind of like relations to each other whether as friends or whatever else it's like I don't really have investment in these characters to really care about that aspect right now some people might again this is just another thing that I've noticed when I'm reading something if I don't have like a good sense of of like where the plot is going and it's just kind of meandering introducing all these elements then it's just like why am I going to keep going you know that's the reason why I try to read samples of stuff that I probably won't like just so I can key on what I do like and try to implement that in my own stuff and yeah and kind of left you put on such a rebel act but I keep hearing your how you say that crush cash talking out of your mouth again and again anybody raised outside a clad knows that it's easier to get forgiveness than promotion besides a permit really isn't strictly legally necessary all the way out here we're not in anybody's jurisdiction you know in a way it feels like this sample is doing too much unnecessary um, showing like you know through the maybe through their banter or whatever kind of discussions they're having about this setting it should open up on a big old mystery and get you right into the thick of of whatever the overall big conflict will be you know because right now it's just my eyes are starting to glaze over where it's like oh when is the, when is the action or the mystery gonna start and then they're, they're trying to wake up the ai any other boats in the area kind of said no at the same moment singer said not in regular space and the ones in white space would be invisible and immaterial if there were any until such a time as they fell fell onto our heads or fell on our heads now that's actually an interesting note because it's like wait there's a, a, a space above regular space and they could there's like some sort of terror in there or something or some sort of cosmic oopsie daisy hmm where's more of that y you know and it only t took like how many pages now I'm about 24% into the sample <laughs> it's like look up please please <laughs> give me more more meat to this thing uh, we spent a long time in D cell now that I talked to myself into tuning I use this time more wisely I wet myself down and took a nap I'm not sure what Connella did I mean it just seems like it's focusing too much on the mundane and not enough on the fantastic uh, Let's see. Oh, and about 26%, they finally get to like, ooh, hey, wait, there's maybe a derelict. 
Uh, space station, my mind provided. Catastrophically decompressed. The part of my brain that recognizes patterns and signs things and categories is leaning on its shovel, catching a few zeds once again. The tumbling arc brought the weird object between us and the long arm of the Milky Way, and I recognized the silhouette even convulsed into that strange arc an instant before Singer identified it. It's an... Okay, let's see. Strange word here. Active... Ica. Okay, uh, he said, it appears to be dead. Uh, can they die? I asked, stunned, just as Connell bushed out. What the hell is it doing all the way out here? I hope nothing killed it. Anything that could take on it, uh, act, I guess I'm gonna just call it Acti. Anything that could take on Acti, well, Singer was an unarmed tug and fuel efficient, but not what you would call a fast or maneuverable flyer. He was good at going in straight lines and really really cheaply while hauling enormous masses at a safe but reasonable clip though which was why his white coils were so much bigger than he was none better if that was what you needed and usually in our case it was uh, I'm wondering it, it, it seems like it's an overabundance of words just to, to pad out you know the story again if you guys if some people like that sort of thing that that then you know what the whole world's filled with a whole lot of books that pad out everything to to the letter but I probably would have opened up on the creepiness of something in white space possibly being able to jump them and opening up with like hey they found this abandoned Hulk but it took them pages to get to the 27% point where it's like oh wait here's a here's an uptick to the mystery like and Hesse oh my goodness but yeah this is like a whole lot of I don't even know if I should just read all of this here I'll just read uh, the uh, to the last point here by the 32% part I'm talking to a court panel maybe a judge and a couple of AIs and some people from various sister sister species I guess sister with a Y who've come up in the service lottery as this Anne or maybe I'm talking to the crew of another salvage chug because I am dead and what you have left is this voice record not even an antea or maybe I'm talking to a historian some infomorphist who's unearthed this from a forgotten storage crystal or maybe you're a pirate in which case I hope you choke on what I have to say I mean because I guess that's the reason why so much of this description is taking a while to get to the point because it, it's trying to do it as like a retrospective of this per of whatever events happened to this person but it's just like oh my god I mean it, it's like it's sprinkled with little mysteries that are interesting but it's just encased in a bunch of words that just slow everything down so we were swinging our mass detectors around, scanning for a ripple of sorts in the heaviness of space, a spot that would appear as if someone had teased a magnet along a pile of iron fillings and drawn them to the all to one side or the other, so they heaped in two ridges and the center became a valley. There was dark gravity here in the space between the stars as well all around us intertwined with the stuff of the Milky Way. The stuff was like spun sugar stretched between sticky fingers if the galaxy were a snacking toddler. That's a whole lot of words for just like uh, you are in the depths of space in the the starry expanse, you know. Mm, kind of like in, in Fifth Element when Corbin's saying, "Hey, is what's the shortened version of your name?" So, that's what I prefer. It's like try to get your point across in as few words as possible, because <sighs> it does feel like padding. Based on the reviews, a lot of people loved the padding, but me, I'm just trying to get to points. It's just, yeah, oh boy. Oh man, then this part. So there was our gravitational anomaly, which is to say our anomaly in the distribution of mass, a wormhole scar, so-called, the mark left by a particular kind of failed a white transition because alcubiri so, well, so I guess sometimes some people want to pick unusual words just to be like, oh, look, this is this is kind of like unusual wording or spelling or even um, like just call it a just call it like a mass drive, FTL drive. It's fine. It doesn't. Ha or maybe it could be like a bridge drive, uh, <laughs> something that falls off the tongue a bit smoother. 
Uh, if you do one of those right, the dark gravity is supposed to go right back where it started. I mean, given that we still don't have a really good idea of how gravity works or where it comes from, and we still haven't managed to figure out how to generate it, despite the fact that it's been the best part of a, of a millennium since Isaac Newton discovered apples. Anyway, if your bubble collapses completely, you stop bending space-time around yourself to cheat Newton and Einstein, and if you're lucky, you pop back out into regular space a few hundred light ands. Okay, so A and S, they, they're replacing that for year, but even though I want to say year. From anything useful and hope you can get a repair, your, you can repair your drive before you starve or run out of oxy. If you're unlucky, you become an out an angle to reality where your ship and your biology don't conform to the local laws of physics, and oh well. That's a lot to say, like, um, if your slip drive fails, you're pretty much spaghetti monster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. But, uh, like, the whole first chapter, I would say 90% of the first chapter is, is, uh, Miss Bear setting up like some of the basics, I guess, theories and laws of relativity and things in her universe because I guess she wants to go a more hard sci fi route. But there's a whole lot of. Uh, there's a whole lot of information dumping that doesn't really capture my interest. Um, in fact. Chapter 2 starts off out a little bit better, but it, it's taking them forever to get to this derelict. If that's even the point of this. Proximity klaxons shrilled up my nerves, stimulating physical pain. Not incapacitating, but demanding action. Connella had moved towards me. Now he kicked towards the controls, but I already knew what we were hearing. Another vessel's white bubble had just brushed ours. The interface made the intruding ship a sharp pinch on my skin, an elbow in my ribs. What they could have used the first chapter for is like, okay, if these people have like a symbiotic relationship with their ships to where it, it's a tied into their nervous system, I've seen other books do this a little bit faster. You know, again, like for me, for my primary thing as a reader is wham, bam, thank you, bam. Please get to the point because I only have so many hours in a day to read because I'm also writing because I'm also doing stuff on the channel and things like that. You know, it's like uh, I feel like um, even even um, what is it uh, su the Sun Eater series, even though it has a lot of detail, there's a whole lot of plot moving forward as well. For this thing, it's taking it. It took a, over a chapter for some sort of event to happen, yeah, you know, like something to galvanize something into action. Whether it's the characters, whether it's the ship getting into trouble, that sort of thing. Because in those opening chapters, you really have to make like uh, uh, a dent in the reader. Like, uh, is the reader going to keep going or not? So. One brush of its white coils on Singers, and we were all dead. Our chemical process is failing, if not simply our covalent bonds. We were insanely fortunate that it hadn't unfolded space-time when it was pointed directly at us, or directly at the thing we'd come to salvage, though that might have been safe for now inside its fold in space. I'm not sure that anybody had ever run into the experiment to find out, and I'm not sure I didn't want to be the one to science that. Space isn't empty. The big sneeze, as some people call it, or as some people call it, the enemy, but we've always been uncomfortable personalizing, is scattered with particles, some with mass and some without. Some of these particles are in the area before the ship in white space. The space gets folded, compressed, made smaller. They get swept up in the bubble and accelerated to match the relative velocity of the ship. Um, I I'll link, I'll link uh, below. Uh, a certain someone that does hard sci-fi better and with more action-packed stuff <clears throat> torch ship you know just to offer people an indie alternative to what I consider somebody doing something a bit at least in my vein of preference and reading to where he doesn't waste he doesn't waste words time or anything else getting to the point he has all the, those hard sci-fi kind of 
bells and whistles that some people look for, but he has a plot that just moves like boom, 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 boom. Yep. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it is just describing how the ship goes in and out of white space and things like that, but I'm trying to scroll to see where, let's see, go Newton. He meant let the ship bob back up on the surface of space. I stabilized myself and turned off the paint. I'd fix the angle later. Where the hell are they? He twisted his head, meaningless, but reflex. I don't know. They've gone. Maybe they went past. So basically, they're, they're experiencing more of like uh, the near misses and everything. But we still haven't gotten to the, the point of what they're looking for is this big old derelict of, of like advanced tech that was taken out somehow at time ago or something it's just like uh, and I keep scrolling we're about 50% through the sample and it's just like oh goodness again it's just taking her forever to get uh, to get to to the point uh. and by the end of chapter 2 it's like they like, oh it's a different kind of ship Hey me, kind of sound wordy. Status, uh, squiggle me right wise, I told him. There's gravity in here, but it's not spinning. I heard him realizing what the obvious thing he just said in the silence a second after he said it, and we both decided by mutual silent acclaim to let it slide. Yeah, I said, this thing isn't mass enough to be generating it that way or any, or in any way the corridor is, if by my dead reckoning is correct, more or less right angles to the center of mass, so it is artificial, right? Generated somehow. I would have condensed all that down to, based on the readings I'm getting, it looks like this is an artificial space. It's constructed. That's it. You know, like, whoop, squeeze. So, how are you guys doing today? I don't think I can really get into chapter three just because it's just like, oh my goodness. But this is also the reason why, when it comes to samples of stuff, I will try to give a book at least three chapters to get my interest. Have a good day, everybody.